Good morning. Today I'm going to go through a technique for um, importing photographs and converting them so that they're laser engravable. So I'm going to start off with this picture of this little boy. I've got it into my Corel Draw. First thing I'm going to go do is hit Edit Bitmap. That will take me into Corel Photo Paint. Initially, we need to do a little bit of work on this image. You are considering this image has a darker background. You're definitely far better off trying to get rid of most of the background stuff right away. In a lot of cases, there's a very easy way to do this. You go up to the selection tool and we're going to choose magic wand mask. At this point you can adjust your tolerance and I'll show you the difference in a higher tolerance versus a lower. Notice I jumped up to about 33 percent, 33 on the tolerance level and it actually jumped into the kid's face and his hat and stuff like that. So the lower you go means it's going to be less tolerant of other colors. So in this case I drop it down to 10 and if you notice it pretty well outlines the kids uh, body, hat, face, everything. So we're gonna leave this at 11 here. Sorry I said 10 earlier but it's actually 11 that I was at. And we are then going to go and just hit delete. You now you notice that gets rid of the background. So that actually looks pretty good. So at this point we're going to go back to a rectangle mask and just click somewhere to get rid of those lines. I know there's a little bit of border edging on here. Um, you can leave it. It really won't affect too much. It'll kind of highlight them a little bit. If you want to go in you can zoom in and you can actually use the paintbrush tool we got it on black right now so I gotta switch the colors to white and you can go in and you could use that paintbrush tool to clean them up if you really want to get good on your image or the final laser burn doesn't turn out well but you can kind of see how that works I'm not going to worry about these little fragments that are on the edges those really aren't going to matter too much either so one thing that this was going to be put on was a bracelet. So in this case we wanted it round. So I'm just going to draw a round mask around the kid's face and notice that this is kind of oblong. If you hold your control key down it'll give you a perfectly uh, round circle. So that looks pretty good right there. Um, I'm going to leave it right there and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit mask and then invert because I want to get rid of everything but the circle area so I'm going to hit delete oops I forgot to change my background color back to white and then I can just click somewhere in there to get rid of it so you can see now you've got a nice round border there now the next thing you're going to need to do I want to increase the the density or the dots per inch of this image. So I'm going to resample it. I'm going to resample it to 300 dpi. Now before we can actually get into actually converting this to a laserable format, I like to go in and I like to make some adjustments. My favorite method is using tone curve. I'm going to drag this over here so you can see what I'm doing. But the best results that I usually have, and it depends on the, on the image, this is something you're going to have to play with. So this tutorial is just the basics on how to get there. Um, I tend to grab the middle of the line, notice I was at the middle of this straight angled line here and I drag it up two squares 
And then notice I got a flat spot up here. I typically grab up here right near the flat spot and I round that curve out just a little bit. Now the image doesn't look that great here. However, when it lasers out, it should be pretty, de pretty decent. We want the light areas fairly light, but not completely white. And then we've got another good amount of definition in the rest of the image. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to go up to Image and Convert to Black and White. You have several different filters that you can use, or conversion filters, Jarvis, Stucky, and Floyd Starberg. Uh, Jarvis usually works the best for stuff that I've done. So I'm just going to go with Jarvis. Now the next thing you need to do is zoom in by clicking. You can also use your scroll wheel on your mouse into a lighter area. Now you notice that there is not much in the way of dots in this white area. This shows what the image is going to be. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Actually, I need to go up. And honestly, in this case, I may have uh, adjusted my tone curve too high. So I'm going to cancel this, hit undo, and I'm going to redo my tone curve. Um, so instead of dry, pulling two up, I'm only going to go up about one and a half. And then I'm going to drag this back down, keep it a nice even curve, and hit OK. And now we go in here and try again, Jarvis. Now you notice this white area here. Now it's got more dots in it. You al almost always want some dots in all areas of the image. Not a lot, but if there's no dots in there at all, you're going to get kind of a washed out image when you laser engrave it. So this looks pretty good to me. Notice that I ran this up to 100. If I drop it down, this is what happens. You get really, really white areas. So I'm just going to drag it back up, hit OK. And to me that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit Finish Editing. And I'm going to save it. And then close Photo Paint. So now if I were to go into our D-Works, I'm just going to set up some basic scan stuff. Um, I tend to go a little slower on images, just so it's a little smoother. And I get I decrease my definition a little bit so I get more passes per line. So we're going to go in and do a simulate on it. And if you look at the, at the negative image of it, that does not look too bad. I mean, it looks like a completely reversed image at this point, but it should look fine if you're doing this on lighter colored wood. If you were doing this on darker colored wood, you would need to convert this image a little bit. Um, you need basically need to reverse it. Um, or create what you call a negative image. In this case, I'm going to be doing this on lighter colored wood, so I'm not going to do a negative image. Stay tuned and I will have a clip after this of this image actually engraving out. Notice that the image is about 2.6 by 2.8. Now one thing that you'll have to notice too, I'm going to draw a circle here because let's just say I want to cut that out. I'm going to right click on red and we're going to make that circle Two, two inches or so. Yeah, we need to go a little bit bigger than that. 2.6. So now if you drag it down, you can see where it lines up down here. Now, if I were to click on the background image a little bit, and I'm just going to put a border on it so you can... See, I'm going to try and put a border on it here. There we go. I had to do a fill in order to do it. But you can see that even though we cut that area out, the image itself is still 
larger than the area we cut. The circle shows the area that we, we cut and cropped it to. So when you send it to the laser, it's always going to send a rectangle or a square in this case. So just something to keep in mind. At any rate, the red line is going to wind up being our cut line when we cut it out. So I'm just going to do my color fill here and save this file off and we can start engraving it.